Good evening and welcome to the Eve Prosper Market Show. I'm your host, Locke Fox, and I'm here for this week's news and market info in EVE Online. Let's go ahead and start where we usually do, and that's with some brief show news to the dulcet tones of the Jita Undock. If you want to follow the show, all you have to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and the blog. And if you want to support us directly, the best place to do so is on Patreon at patreon.com slash Eve Prosper. We provide this show free of charge and open to everyone, and it's really our patrons that keep this show on the air. So thank you so much. Um, also, I want to point everyone to the site at eveprosper.com. Uh, just released this morning a new blog post that uh, may have flown under some radars. Blake uh, over at K162 Space has been scraping up uh, NPC kill data. He came to me with some of that data to see if we could find some trends, and we found some interesting information, but I wanted to go ahead and take an opportunity to highlight how I do the data science behind the show and sort of an order of operations. If you've ever been wondering how data science works, or at least how I do it, um, I'm not by no means a true professional, but uh, I go ahead and I leave sources and uh, talk about what I see in the graphs and, and it's supposed to be an interesting tutorial. Uh, I'd love to hear feedback from people. If you guys have uh, feelings up or down about that kind of content, um, it's it was uh just kind of all fell together pretty easily so go check that out also uh be sure if you haven't already to check out Caleb Baranya's uh market maker interview that's up on YouTube now and up on podcast and everywhere uh we should have another one of those out hopefully on Monday or Tuesday uh depends on how schedules work i think we're going to be talking to Diana Olympos this week uh, ahead of their CSM run with that let's go ahead and head on to the news uh, first, before we get into the formal news, I want to thank CCP Quant for being a A plus level troll this week. Um, so the details about skill trading meant that there was a change to the way uh, skill trading prerequisites worked, um, which caused a whole bunch of consternation on the forums and Reddit about command ships because their their requirements were changed a while back to require all of the leadership skills to basically five, which meant you had to train like four or six months worth of uh, leadership skills to get into a command ship. And the thing that changed was that the you needed the prerequisites to train any additional skill points uh, once the change goes live. And so <laughs> there were a whole bunch of people wailing and gnashing their teeth. And CCB Quant highlighted just how many people changed their skill plans to be command ships. This is the number of people, uh, the relative change in people training command ships like right now. Uh, thankfully, the news is that if you have a single skill point in a skill, you're able to train it up entirely. It, it doesn't have to check prerequisites before inserting the skill. So um, as long as you have put one skill point into the skill before patch day next week, which is next Tuesday, uh, you will be able to train whatever skill regardless of the prerequisites as long as it's plugged in your brain. And once again, it's CSM season, so be sure to be checking into CSM Watch. And uh, all of the news sites right now have been running interviews and and information about all of the candidates. Um, on CSM Watch, the latest review show is out, and we, talked, we talk about Apothne, Deanna Olympos, Uriel, uh, the lore guy, Gorski Carr, Wild, and Noobman, and also CCP Lilu was in the press this last week, uh, finally pushing the, putting the white paper straight. Um, and we talk about all of that on the latest CM, uh, CSM watch. Uh, also there's no, I saw no other particularly important news this week, no new dev blogs ahead of the patch this Tuesday. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and move right into Plex. Uh, we saw last week that Plex was climbing towards 1.25 billion, um, and it quickly lost its footing thanks to a Plex sale that started right as the show went live last week. Um, we're seeing it stay under the 120 mark, and I hope you guys stocked up because that particular little respite looks to be over. Um, if we look at the one year view, again, not a lot to talk about this week. Uh, we're just staying level around that 120 number, which is perfectly fine. 
also if we look at RMT tokens, the prices for multiple pilot training certificates uh, looks like the margins are widening slightly there. Um, we're finally seeing it get back into the normal pattern we'd been seeing it for the last few last few months. Uh, over December and early January, um, it was lagging more so than usual. But now that Plex is more in a stable spot, uh, we're seeing multiple pilot training cer certificates uh, hold their ground. Um, the interesting thing, and I want to thank Noisy Gamer for making me do this poll right before the show, is that Plex is popping up as of right now. Like, this this should be within the last hour. Uh, we are seeing the low prices of 120 evaporate, and we're heading straight towards 125. Now, uh, if you're Noisy Gamer, and I hate to steal his his thunder here, it sounds like uh, a bunch of the I Want Isk bankers got unbanned, and uh, they might be moving to uh, secure some assets as we see the uh, sell volume quickly diminish uh, as, as orders are bought out. So um, it'll be interesting to see where this particular fall lands. Uh, but I expect us to be at one, two, five billion by this time Friday. And if we look at all the other, all of the other markets, again, we're seeing a little more, uh, volatility in the Amar markets this week. Uh, looks like we've rotated off Dodixie being the, being the spiky child and onto Amar doing the, doing the spiking. I am finding it interesting just how, how quickly Amar is keeping pace with Jita's rise because it really looks like, um, one or two or three dedicated traders are buying out the market more so than a general sweep north like we would see. I mean, if we go back to the zoom in and we look at the last hump that got us near 125, um, there was a little bit of shortage, but there was, it, it just looked like a normal amount of buying and selling going on, like like the, the slopes and there are ups, ups and downs as we go there. Um, this particular run looks like just buying out every order up to a target price. Uh, and I think the target price is one, two, five. I don't know what's going to happen in the intervening days specifically, but I expect us to stay at one, two, five into the patch. Moving into minerals. Uh, minerals were a little interesting this week. Tritanium, uh, we mentioned last week popped up pretty hard, but was, spiking back down. Um, we saw it spike again, which I'm really not sure what was driving this in particular. This might just be uh, some bad orders, but eh, we'll see. And uh, we're back at a steady state just under 6.4. Uh, pyrite is in a particular slide. Uh, we're seeing it come off of the 11.3 mark that we were at last week, sliding down towards 11.0. Um, we're at 11.1 right now, and it looks like we're recovering ground. It's a good chance to buy in if you can play the mineral trade game. Uh, you need really high skills and really low taxes if you want to do that. Um, but this looks like a pretty decent chance to be buying some pyrite if you needed to stock up. Uh, Mexalon, uh, this is a little misleading. I have a zoom in in just a second. It looks like the price was at 61 and then drop down to 60. If we go ahead and look at the zoom in, the price is a lot less interesting. Um, looks like there were just some bad orders that went on uh, that screwed up the price. But I mean, the trend is slightly downwards. This screws up the zoom in, unfortunately. I think that we're going to see Mexilon rebound in the next day or two because supplies still seem to be relatively strong. Demand also continues to be pretty strong. Um, I don't think we'll stay under, I don't think we'll stay at 60 or under for very long. Moving on to Isogen, I keep predicting the, the floor of this thing and I keep being wrong. I had said 110 was the floor and then we fell through that and now it looks like we're at 100 as a floor. Um, again, it looks, it looks pretty good, but without actually seeing mining yields, uh, exactly how much Omber is coming out of the fields, it, it, it's hard to really predict exactly where Isogen is going to stop. If we look at the zoom in, I mean, it looks really convincing that we're here at at the minimum. Um, but that's a pattern we keep seeing every time we hit one of these shelves is that buy and sell margins uh, just 
keep running into each other and then we fall and then they run into each other and then they fall and the supply just keeps creeping up and it looks like we may have reached a peak but you can also read this that this was the peak or this was the peak so it might still be a week too early to really tell you that we're at the bottom of this um i think that 100 is going to be a bit of a psychological floor and uh we'll we'll see if if things keep falling um if we go under the 100 mark um i would start looking at buying perhaps but we're still seeing a lot of supply noxium is another interesting one we've seen it uh it was spiking the last few weeks but it looks like it's it's correcting now um, at about 465, this looks like a pretty decent target to buy in. Unfortunately, we're really at a spot where it could go up or down directly. So this is a bit of a risky bet at the moment. Um, these, these swings down low have me thinking that, uh, the, we're looking at the floor at the moment, but I'm kind of bad at, at picking the Noxium market. Zydrine. Zydrine has been the one I've been complaining about for three or four weeks now as we go and settle in at 1100. Um, again, I want to point out that Zydrine and Megasite are at parity with each other, which is weird. And uh, it bothers me. I wish they weren't, but the market is the market. Looks like things are relatively stable at 1100. And if we go to the zoom in, um, the local prices are spiking up towards... Uh, 1.15k and the supplies have slumped just in the last few hours again to keep seeing this trend line going down i gotta wonder where the floor is for supply um i find it hard to believe that zydrine could be actually constricted uh seeing as you can source it basically anywhere uh so i find i find this particular shortage extremely strange Megasite is another interesting one. We're seeing a quick blip off the 1100 mark. It's a little too early to say if this is a concerted trend. Uh, we will keep an eye on this every week like we do. And Morphite uh, had been stable around uh, 11250, uh, but we've been seeing it dip down to the 11k mark and uh, quickly rebound that was a great chance to buy in as it head toward headed towards uh 10k but i only do this show weekly so i can't tell you <laughs> if i miss this uh, i don't know what to tell you and then if we look at all of them in zoom in uh, i think the more fight price is going to rebound reasonably quickly zydrine is showing a pretty widespread at the moment and megasite uh, again we don't have enough data to know exactly where this is going yet Moving on to the fuel markets, as we look at isotopes, not much has changed in the last week. Um, again, we keep seeing nitrogen climb up higher. We're almost to uh, 925 a unit, which is ex still extremely high. Um, we've seen a little bit of heat in the other markets where Galente and Minmatar have been tracking up to 750 off of the pre-Thanksgiving uh 700 mark that everything was locked in at um i think a decent target for everything all of these isotopes is at least 800 if you want to lock in a moderately low risk low uh effort kind of bet ahead of citadels i think getting in on the galente minmatar and amar markets uh for isotopes with a target of 800 a unit, I think is a pretty safe bet. Uh, we might get a little bit above that. I have a hard time saying all the way up to 850. Um, uh, but until we actually see the the alchemy answers, uh, I think we're going to we're still going to see a conservative market. Now, as soon as CCP announces what the fuel alchemy looks like, where uh, what the penalty is for using a single isotope rather than all four, uh, uh, that'll, that'll really set the price of things. So you'll want to get that locked in before that dev blog comes out, which should be sometime in February, I would hope. Fuel blocks, again, staying pretty stable. We saw a huge spike in Galente blocks um, and a strange ripple. Uh, I wouldn't expect it to pop back up after that. But looks like we're back in line with the isotope values. Uh, everything else looks relatively normal. 
And if we do our weekly zoom in on the nitrogen isotope market, um, looks like supplies are staying stable at about 100 million units on the market, which is where we've been for the last few months. Um, I still find it weird that uh, we came down, we basically halved the, the ice supply in the last two months. Um, I'm not sure if where it's all going, and I actually kind of expected with the price as high as it is for more materials to be making it to the regular market, but eh, the market is the market. Uh, we're looking like we might see some some supply rise into the weekend, which might be a decent chance to buy in under 900. But I'd only be doing that if you're going to actually build and consume the blocks rather than try to use that as a speculation target. Because I think we're going to come off this 900 peak as soon as the alchemy instructions are released. Moving on to the outliers, the last big section of the show. Um, we're going to talk about where we always start, advanced materials. Ferrogel is particularly interesting this week. Uh, we saw actually we saw it spike last week, and it's settling into a 25K mark. Um, the trend on nanotransistors keeps being down. Same with ceramic fibers. We saw it staying high over the break, but without... Uh, a strong Tech 2 ship demand to hold it up. Ceramic fibers are on their way down. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. This might be a great chance to be buying in on ceramic fibers and nanotransistors if you think that uh, war is coming because it looks like there are some... There are some other other things going on in the Tech 2 ship markets that might make these interesting investments in the short term. Next, moving on to PI4s. Again, our darlings until Citadel's release. Uh, looks like everything's staying relatively strong. Integrity response drones and wetware mainframes, though, have been losing a lot of heat. This might be a good chance to uh, sneak in some orders at the at these lower sub-20 million prices. Um, not sure how much money you'll actually make on that, but if you're late to the party, this is a great time to show up and try to uh, regain the super genius status because uh, this weekend looks like a really great chance to buy in. Wetware mainframes look like a local minimum. Again, it looks like it looks like things are turning around. We saw a spike in supply uh, that's driving the price down, and like I said, right now is really the best time to buy in if you're not already bought in. Um, I still think a target north of three million is a good one, uh, but I don't have a ton to back it up. Another interesting one. This one. Uh, flagged pretty hard and I'm always surprised when something like this happens is Kaldari Starship engineering data cores. Um, I always expect faction warfare guys to hop on this the second anything starts looking good and the prices have risen about 30k in the last two weeks. So I expect the if you if you have faction warfare loyalty points on the Kaldari side, go cash them out like right now stop listening to the show log in cash them out get them get them to market sell them uh and hopefully get more than 130k a, a core for them and i expect this to crash over the next few days as there is a bum rush to go to go take care of it because data cores are just the easiest thing to get rid of right uh another interesting darling ahead of the skill trading ahead of the skill trading release is the plus five implant market. Now, I was going to include the plus fours, but they have some pretty high spikes that make it hard to read this. Um, things are trending up. I hazard to say that you should go run to market and uh, jump on these and buy and sell them because, again, this is something that's easy to get out of faction, war faction warfare loyalty point stores and everybody can supply it. So the second it starts looking halfway decent... Uh, expect the supply to race in to to fix that. So this isn't a great place to be speculating. I still I would still hold my cash to speculate on the skill injectors themselves uh, ahead of Citadel. Moving on to ships, we start with bombers, which again I really like as a indicator of action, just as sort of a second second order thing. Um, we see the Hound and the Manticore tracking up pretty strongly, but I don't know if there's enough demand elsewhere to really keep up, keep up the pace. If we pair that, that bomber view with the interceptor view, I don't think there's as much action going on. I mean, we're seeing this heat in Crusaders, 
but we're seeing this dive in claws. I don't think that there's enough uh, interceptor action going on to point at a a great war starting. So uh, despite all of the shit posting, otherwise, I think everyone's being reasonably uh, being reasonably calm. There's a couple of spikes here and there. Again, if you can sell, if you can get sold on Crusaders, now's a great chance to cash out. But I expect that to pop over the weekend. Um, again, if we zoom into claws, we saw the prices spike. Uh, looks like again, sort of a supply shortage, and the prices have been falling. Um, indicators say that it's a, getting to be a decent time to buy, but I still think it's a little too high, uh, compared to the production cost to be really speculating in it yet. Um, and then the Crusader, again, we see this, uh, this shortage so, uh, signal going on and the, I think the prices are going to come crashing down real hard, uh, over the next two days. All right. Um, moving on to the Raven Navy issue, the... A stalwart item of every mission runner, the Raven Navy issue uh, usually is extremely stable. That the second it starts looking like a halfway decent thing to cash out on, everybody and their grandma is going to cash in on it. Um, it looks like there was a significant buyout uh, over the last, at the start of the month perhaps, um, and the prices have just been wild lately. Um, the volumes are not as high as I usually expect. Um, we're topping out at about 30 sold a day, so it's not that hot a market. Uh, there are so many other mission ships out there that are governed by also, that are also useful for PvP. So, um, this might just be a nostalgia trip more than a, a real flag, but it was interesting to see. I, I don't think I've seen Raven Navy issue, uh, trigger any of our flags ever so i i usually highlight those all right um on the recon market uh, we're seeing the arazu spike up which is rather interesting looks like there was a pretty hefty buyout but the volume seemed to be tracking back again um Whenever this sort of thing happens, I expect producers to screw the pooch on the market. So um, if you can sell, now's a great time to sell. Uh, but I'd be watching over the next five days for a chance to buy in at the old price of, what is that, $160 million? Um, as a decent As a decent target. We might see some ripples uh, in the meantime. And then uh, another interesting, speaking of Faction Warfare loyalty point stores, it looks like the Amar are doing a cash out. Uh, we're seeing the Imperial Navy slicer trending downwards uh, amid steady volume. Um, it looks like uh, the, the, the coffers have been opened for uh, Amar Faction Warfare loyalty points. Um, we also see a similar pattern on the Argorer Navy issue. Um, so... I'd be watching over the next, not this weekend, but the next weekend for a chance to stock up on Amar faction uh, goodies uh, as the market bottoms out and faction and loyalty points dry up. So this is going to be an interesting time to uh, participate. So speaking of command ships from earlier, uh, with the skill panic, it looks like uh, there was also a run on the EOS. I didn't see any other... Um, command ships flag our analysis and I didn't get a chance to do the uh, custom look at the at the ships individually. Uh, again, the volumes on here are extremely low. We're talking five to six items a day. Um, so I expect this to crash back down real hard. If you need to pick up an EOS, I would look to be I'd be looked to buy I would be looking to buy on Monday or Tuesday as we dip under the 320 million mark because I expect this to crash, uh, basically bounce off that floor and uh, that'd be a great chance to buy in. Um, and I believe, no, this is not the last one, the second to last one. The uh, Hammerhead 2s were extremely interesting this week that uh, they basically added 20k, 15k to the uh, price of them overnight. Um, not really sure what's going on here. The, uh, again, I didn't get a chance to do the zoom in, um, looks like some sort, sort of shortage, but I always expect the volume on these to be so hot 
that any sort of spike like this should be momentary. Uh, so I'm interested to see if this this sticks around for an extra week um, at these high prices. If you can go build them or if you've been sitting on a stack, now is an excellent time to sell them. But uh, as a chance to buy in, I think we're going to be maybe two weeks before this heat uh, dissipates. And then just for my signal cartel bros uh, fighting the good fight in Thera, the uh, Sisters Core Probe Launcher flagged. I know it doesn't look like much here, but it looks like it might be trending down. Um, there is a big fight going on in Thera. If you've not been watching Wingspan's uh, YouTube lately, they've been talking about it. Uh, they've been at war with uh, Thera Boys, I think is who they are. I don't remember who's holding the who's holding Thera and who they're taking it from. So um, the Signal Cartel guys asked me to zoom in on this, and this is what we're looking at. It looks like we can expect the prices to slim down into the next patch, and I'm not sure exactly where we're going to end up in the next 14 days, but this is going to be an interesting one to watch in the meantime. And now on to the last section of the show where we figure out if I know what I'm talking about or not, which if you were watching live, you realize I don't know what I'm talking about and I can barely do this show. I'm barely a functioning adult. Um, we'll see if that gets edited or not. Uh, this I think is going to be the last week we look at Quaff Zero. The, uh, the I, I had said that just after the supply dried up at the end of frost line that that was going to be your best chance to sell um and that looks to be the case it looks like there's a bunch of people still holding the uh holding the there's a whole bunch of people holding on to these thinking they're worth value but uh as you can see supply just keeps climbing up we've gone from a 6k uh, supply all the way up to a 9k supply so uh, I think it's going to be a good chance to buy in in a couple of weeks here if uh, if traders aren't careful we might actually dip below the 10 million mark and make it a uh, make it an actual decent chance to buy in again and make sure you're stocked up because Guaf Zero is awesome Another interesting one we've been keeping an eye on uh, week to week is Jump Freighters, uh, where the Ark was hot a couple of weeks back. The Anshar is hot this week, and thanks to Commander A's for making me zoom in on it, because I actually put the right graphs in this time. Um, the Anshar, we see the volume hasn't really changed. Demand is staying relatively flat. But if we look at the Obelisk, the Obelisk is tracking up rather strongly. And uh, we can see that it looks like there's a bit of a shortage. Uh, somebody probably bought out a whole bunch of these. Um, I expect the prices to come back down to the 135 billion mark uh, in the next, over the weekend, maybe the next week. Um, so the heat we saw in Anshars, I expect to also evaporate. So there's not a great chance to be speculating on Anshars, but the price will come down a few hundred million. So. Uh, if you were holding off, now uh, you might just have to hold off for a week. With that, we're going to go ahead and end the show. I've been your host, Lock Fox, and you've been watching the Prosper Market Show. If you want to follow the show, all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and the blog. We're on Friday nights at 0300, live on Twitch and YouTube. Keep tuned to the Twitter for information on when we are live. And if you want to interact with us off the air, the best place to do so is on the Tweet Fleet Slack in the Prosper channel. Uh, a lot of cool dudes there. We talk a whole bunch about a lot of things. So come hang out and uh, talk market stuff. Information on how to join will be down in the doobly-doo below. Uh, if you want to support the show and what we do here, the best way to do so is through our Patreon at patreon.com slash eveprosper. We provide this show ad-free and... Uh, without any other stipulations or strings attached, thanks to our patrons. They keep this show on the air. Um, we do have hosting costs. We do have licensing costs. So uh, I have to thank them every single week from the bottom of my heart. With that, I'm going to go ahead and end the show. And thanks everyone who tuned in live on Twitch and Twitter. We will be back next week, uh, hopefully with some shiny new graphs, uh, to talk about the skill trading expansion uh yc 118.2 so tune in next week we'll be back this has been the eve prosper show